morning. So this is the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And to be honest with you, we really haven't done a whole heck of a lot since Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a good holiday. We had a had a wonderful time, but now it's you know probably time to do some actual work, I guess. So Friday Cargill was closed, so we couldn't really do anything. All the trucks are loaded. Um, we do have enough space to dump a couple trucks. It's been too wet to really do beans, so I'm going to go over and try to dump some trucks, see where we're at. The reason we are trying to cram all the grain we can cram into all the spaces we can cram it is because if we can get by till December 1st, we pick up 20 cents on beans and 40 cents on corn just in basis. So basis is, I guess, I guess the best way to describe the basis when it comes to prices there's a Chicago board trade, which would be like the stock, like the, like the stock market. There's a so there's a Chicago board trade price, but then there's your basis price. Your basis price is basically what the local demand is. So depending on where you're at and what the local demand is, you might have a positive or negative base. So for example, if the price is five dollars and you have a negative thirty cent basis, your actual cash price is four seventy. If you got a positive thirty cent basis, your cash price would be. 5:30. Well, yeah, that's kind of why we are waiting to haul this grain to town. Now, if we still had a lot of acres left, we would uh, go ahead and you know just take it to town. I've had a lot of people ask me, couldn't you use the hoop barn for temporary storage? We definitely could, but we're going to start putting fertilizer in that next week. We need to have all of our fertilizer on site by the first of the year to get the price we've uh, already locked in, and it's a good enough price that we're going to make sure that happens because. Yeah, fertilizer's like doubled since then. There's my other jacket. Go ahead and do the important part. Get the heat roaring. And start up some semis. So what do the other farmers do with their dryer screenings? So this is what we call dryer screenings. It's basically the, the fines that come out from under the dryer. So when we had cattle, we fed it to cattle. When the neighbors had cattle, they would come get it and feed it to their cattle. Now they're out of the cattle business. George usually gets some for chickens, but I think he's all stocked up. Got someone supposed to come get it to feed deer, but the only problem is once it gets wet, it's pretty much no good. I know the cattle loved it. It's not good enough for like just to feed them, but it's a good snack for them. Yeah, you gotta make sure your door goes all the way up. I've seen, maybe even felt, one of the smokestacks off of one of the trucks hit these doors before. Wait for all of our clickers to go off. Yeah, I think we're ready to start. Got our legs set to our bean bin. So I think we can put one load into bin six and one load into bin four, but we'll have to do some checking. In between two grain carts, we probably have a load on, a load and a half. We should be good for this half the truck. We're gonna hang out up here for a little bit though. So we got one of them empty. I don't know if we're gonna get the other one emptied or not. Because uh, that one topped off that bin. Set up here and washed it the whole time and I thought we'd be able to dump part of that truck in there. So, might be a little close on space. Well, I just came down from there where we still have a little bit of space. And then I come down here and realize that we filled crooked. We do not have any space. We have negative space. Well, I guess that's all the dumping we're gonna do. That was fun. Sound check, sound check. 
Audio check. Yeah, there's Dad. He's got his fancy pants on today. So Dad's going to do some gravel hauling. So he's uh, having me pick him up here at the gravel pit, just moving the dump truck down there. He's going to haul some gravel for the new hoop barn we're putting up. That barn should be delivered here in the next few days and should get started on pouring a pad here this week, I hope. Like I said, I hope so. I'll we'll put some fertilizer in it for the first of the year and we're almost to the first of December, so he did. At least get that concrete setting up. So this gravel pit is actually used for field dirt for the highway beside me, but yeah, this is what's under a lot of our fields. Gravel. So when you see like Zach and Chet having a great year even with a drought like only getting a couple inches of rain. If we only got a couple inches of rain, there'd literally be nothing there to harvest. Like the crop itself would have withered away to nothing because there's our soil structure, folks. A little bit of dirt that's real sandy up top and then gravel and on probably 80% of our acres. That's how it is. Now, as long as we get average rainfalls, we can raise great crops, but droughts really kill us. Droughts hurt us way more than too much rain. Can you make it? Huh? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> hey, you made it better. Made it better than Brad. So while Dad is hauling gravel, I am going to spread some cover crops. See with that with that Oxbow demo we've got. I also want to get these cameras put up. I've got three of them now. I need to I need to put them up. I'm trying to figure out where I want to put them. So these are solar powered cameras that send uh, send images and uh, video to uh, to my phone. They have a data plan, and they also have an SD card they store store stuff into. I don't know if I want to put one on this building right here. I'm trying to think where a thief would park. Um. I mean, if you noticed, we have a, just a random car showing up in the driveway last night. Says it left a note, says it's broke down, but kind of makes you wonder. Kind of like, yeah, man. Thinking maybe putting one up here on top of this building. I want to put one on the corner of the hoop barn, one over there. And I'd like to have one at the front gate because whoever comes in here is going to have to come in that driveway. At least that's my guess. Down there. All right, I'm going to need some self tappers to hang up that camera the way I want to do it. So we're going to go get in the floater spread a little bit of cover crops and then after that we will we will readdress that situation ah there we go so just to double check our rate i have a few bags of rye that i'm going to throw in here i'm going to throw in two bags that should do i'm putting on 30 pounds per acre they're 50 pound bags so that should do just a little over three acres. I just kind of want to double check to make sure that our rate is right. We don't have scales on this tender truck. That is full of rye. We, that's what we will be spreading after after we spread these bags. May not look like it. That's 100 pounds of cover crop seed. I'm so sitting here looking at my cheat sheet because it's it's been a while. It's, it's been a while. We'll figure it out though. Something definitely ain't right because we just spread all of that in... Um, Less than an acre. A little thick back there. So something I don't think I have set right, but I was able to get my rate of cheating my, well, cheating my product density. Shouldn't have to do that, but um, worked for now. If this was anything other than cover crops, I would probably really see what's going on, but cover crops, I'm not super worried about it. Fertilizer would be an expensive mistake if we're over applying. Well, I'm sticking with the spirit of how things are going today. What's the, what's the saying? Work on Sunday, fix on Monday. The bottom of our auger or conveyor on our fertilizer truck is seized up. Apparently we did not get it very clean when we cleaned it out after fertilizer season. So I'm just going to pull this back in the barn. Like about an hour of daylight and I guess we'll look at it tomorrow. There's a door on the bottom we can take loose. I don't think there's even any fertile. I don't know. I don't think there's fertilizer in it, but something's clearly not right. It's not working. So, we'll look at it tomorrow. Good morning. Let's see if today goes any better. We're going to see if we can get this conveyor belt unfroze. So, under here, this is the bottom of the tender. 
didn't get this very cleaned out and now that bottom pulley there is seized up so we are loosening tension off of it tried to kind of get her to spin so next year that will be on the maintenance list yeah for the record i'm aware of mistakes they won't be repeated so the good news is we took the tension off that beaches will turn with a pipe wrench so theoretically we should be able to put tension back on it button everything up down here and be in business yeah, everything's well oiled at the moment. So we've got a paint gun that we can fill with fluid film. We need to blast the whole underside of this truck and this, this housing right here after we get down to cover crop seat. After we use our under underbelly wand on our hot water gun. Yeah, the hot water gun would be nice under here. I don't think I Alright, ready? It didn't go? Nope. Wonderful. So we're putting some more tension on the belt. Kind of a pain in the butt to get to, but BJ's still wiry for an old man. Yeah. One more. Fingers crossed. Third time's the charm. And we got it. There's our problem. Hey, I found the problem. So this is just like the leg belt. It can get off center. This one is, so we're going to center it back up while we're at it. How far off is it? Oh, he did. You just got lucky and tightened it right. Is it tight? No, I just need to lock it down. Oh. PJ, yeah. we're going to Lowe's, right? Could you have parked any further away? I don't want my truck to get dinged by somebody. <laughs> we're also going to Fishes. So we had to come get some uh, some silicone, a couple other things, and then we're meeting Dad for lunch. Don't hit your head. Yeah, that's easier said than done. We won't laugh. Don't let your caulk drip on you. So our tender truck is ready to roll. Got everything that's unseized. We're ready to load this thing up and go spread. Hallelujah. That only took several more hours than I was expecting. <laughs> squishy people said they hadn't seen you for a while he's still alive he used one of his lives dad found him the other day running around with a bag stuck to his head you found an empty bag of beef jerky didn't you i don't know how many lives squishy has left but he definitely used one that day all right guys complete 180 we're going after fertilizer so we we're going to spread some cover crops but that fertilizer spreader is dead. It's a 24 volt system, and we don't have a 24 volt charger. Brad, the guy that's been driving for us, he has one. He's going to be here tomorrow. He's going to help me jump start that thing, and then we will uh, spread tomorrow. But after we get done with the cover crops, I'm going to spread some dry fertilizer, so I'm going to get a load of that now. Dad and BJ are going to harvest a load or two of beans. We only have enough room that we can maybe harvest three loads of beans. We're not going to haul any in for two days, so. Uh, I guess we'll shell or harvest a little bit today and maybe a little tomorrow. I don't know. Hey YouTube, battery went dead on my on the, on the camera that Brian left me and uh, I have no idea how far into video I was so I'm going to record on my cell phone and uh, maybe get this to Brian hopefully. But uh, yeah, Brian's getting fertilized. He's probably on his way back. It's about 3.30 Monday afternoon. Uh, Dad and I are going to take some beans off. Uh, Four little patchy fields down in the valley that we refer to as the pastures. I think it's about 30 some acres. If we can get this done today, uh, that'll leave us about 280, 290 acres of beans. Uh, that's including double crops. Um, haven't really run anything since Thanksgiving, since uh, the day before Thanksgiving actually. Cargill uh, shut down for the holiday, Thursday and Friday. Um, we've got some rain. Uh, didn't get really any sunlight, any wind to speak of. Brian's kids had birthday party Saturday. Uh, took my middle son Landon to a ball game Sunday. Who day? Go Bengals! Big W. Uh, anyway, we're back at it this afternoon. A lot of money in there. All right, so straight ahead. That is the. Uh, that's what I was talking about. The the path. 
pathway up to the upper pasture field. Um, you get up that hill and then there's 13, 14 acres up there. And then down the other side of it, there are two or three acres. The bush hog, we're gonna mow that down. And then there is another set of pasture field, or another pasture field connected on the other end of this field. You'll probably want me to mow that off too. So I would imagine that's gonna happen. Let's see if we can turn around here. Sorry for the unsteady cam. Did not realize how much different it is filming with a cellular phone. Just noticed while doing this that this morning while I was working on the uh, tender truck, I did drop my phone and it is in a case. And the back glass of it is cracked. So hopefully the case keeps everything together. It doesn't look like it's too awful bad. All right, we're back. Dad just called me whenever I was passing uh, the field he's harvesting in that he broke a section and I need to bring him one. So that's where we're going. one of the entrances to the fields still a little little bit of a choke off up there about halfway but i think if he kind of i think it's good enough he can get through i don't think he's got any problems here comes the chief inspector now i'm sure he'll tell me different if we need to but i got this one mowed off and there's an entrance like i said on down that way that it's also mowed off should be a little better Howdy! The BJ's bush hogging our goat path up here to this field. And I don't know. It's gonna be awful tight. I think he'll be able to make it though. So these fields over here are a bunch of patches. There's about 35 acres here. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to harvest, but hey, they're making 62 or three bushel beans, so definitely worth doing. These are not double crops, these are in fact first crops. So we have about 300 acres of beans and in that 300 acres there's about 90 acres of first crops. So I guess now there's about 78 acres of first crops. But yeah, these were planted into May. I don't know why dad didn't bring the gleaner over, but he brought the cloth. So I'm not gonna get the combo or the gleaner. I'd say we're just going to do, uh, well we can only do a, one truckload, so. I doubt we do any more tonight other than this field here. It is getting cold. So BJ's in the other 1038. The underfirth cart is a little bit larger and it is completely loaded with beans. The other grain cart, the one he's in now, did not have near as many beans on it. So that's why we're using it today. Kind of sucks because this is a mud pit down here and BJ, BJ's going to get the other tractor dirty. It's still halfway clean. So we got one field done. Uh, it's, it's already getting dark and it's kind of one of them places where you really don't want to be going around those fields in the dark because there's just so much stuff around the fields. So I'm going to clear out some space in the hoop barn. Dad's already brought the combine up. Park it in the grain cart in the hoop barn in the night. Put this tender truck back over here in the block barn. Enjoy one of the last sunsets of harvest. cats oh you want your belly rubbed roll over roll over huh? Huh? hi dog pull this truck in here tarp it and that'll be pretty much it for today so we still have roughly 300 acres left we have 10 days of great weather so we've kind of made the decision that basically i think we can do another I think we can dump this truck and one more in that bin. And then after that, we can just load this truck in the grain cart and that's it. So I think we only have to, we only have to get by tomorrow. And then it'll be the first of the month. We can capture that premium or that bumping basis. So that's kind of the plan. That's why today wasn't a full bore harvest day. I uh, really wanting to capture that, uh, that basis bump. I mean, we're talking with the amount of bushels we've got to haul in a few thousand dollars. So by waiting, you know, an extra 48 hours, we're gonna, we're gonna get that, so that's good. One thing I don't even think I videoed, I did get my camera working. It's actually just sitting over here. I haven't mounted it where I wanted to mount it yet. I was kinda just testing it out. Pull up my app here. 
I think these are going to be the hot ticket once I get them mounted in the locations I want them. Like I have this one just sitting on a magnet. So like I say, not where I'm going to keep it. Get a live view. See right there. Oh look, there we are. So it's definitely not where I'm going to keep it. It needs to be higher. Like it's not built to, to tip up much more. But yeah, I think once we get one of those hung up on one of these poles around here or something, that'll work pretty nice. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And we'll see you in the next one.